is up, y'all? Welcome back to another video. And in this video, we are going to be finalizing my 55-man roster prediction for the 2020 season. So let's get it started. Welcome into another video, guys. And let me just say there's a reason I ain't paid to do this because uh, I struggled. I really struggled to make some of these tough decisions. And again, you guys can disagree with these. So comment below what other moves you guys would have made. But again, these are my predictions. Not necessarily what I would do, more what I think they will do. So yeah. Oh, let's get hard. Let's get into this. Now, there's a very good chance. I'm just saying there's a very good chance that these aren't exactly right. Okay, there's a very good chance. So we'll just have to wait and see. At this point, it's all just, you know, guessing and opinions and just to try to see what happens and just predictions. It's really all just predictions until it actually happens. So we're going to just hop right into it, man. Now, if you guys didn't see my last video, which was part one to this, I went through the offense. Don't know why I split these into two videos. What kind of dumb idea was it to split this into two videos? So some of you guys probably like, I didn't even see the first video. Yeah, that's not your fault. I'm glad you're here because we're going to go through the offense as well. I Really? Why would I, why would I do that? Okay, let's just start off with the offensive side of things. And yes, it is 55-man roster because of the new CBA. There are 55-man rosters instead of 53, which it used to be. So two more players get on the roster, but still the decisions were very tough. Let's start this thing off. So starting off on the offensive side of the ball, I kept Matthew Stafford, David Blau, and Chase Daniel. Yes, I did decide to keep David Blau. Yes, I still with three quarterbacks. Lions have done both, two and three. I went with three. I mean, I just feel like last year you went through three quarterbacks. It's probably not a bad thing to have three, you know, in the 55-man roster. I like David Blau's potential. I really do think he has a lot of upside. If you guys want to see a video just on David Blau, I did one really recently. So definitely go check that out. Just go to the videos, scroll down a little bit, and you'll see a video on, on uh, David Blau. So definitely check that one out. Now, that's your three. Now let's hop over to the running back position. And here's where the tough decision started. If you guys did see my first video, you will know that this pretty much the whole positional group here was down to Ty Johnson or Bo Scarborough. I ended up having to make a decision. Now, Lions could keep both. They could say, cut the fullback, keep Joe Dahl who can do that, you know, move Bo Scarborough there, whatever you have to do, I'm keeping both. You could do that. I would not be shocked because these guys have a lot of upside and there's reasons to argue for both. However, my prediction was, I think Bo makes it and Ty Johnson does it. I'm going to stick to what I did in the last video, what I predicted last video. That way it still makes sense if you did watch part one. But yeah, I'm going to keep, you know, Bo Scarborough of Ty Johnson. And my reason was this. And I think there's also a case for Ty Johnson. My case for Ty Johnson is that Bob Quinn drafted him. Bob Quinn drafted you. So obviously he liked you, okay? He drafted you. He picked you in the draft. So he didn't have to do that. He actually, he actually liked you. He must have liked you if you were to draft you. And a lot of people don't think about it. This could be a returner. This guy was a returner in college as well. However, on the Bo Scarborough side of things, yes, Bob Quinn didn't draft him, but... He was brought up from the practice squad, and every year it seems like the Lions are trying to bring in power backs, right? Every year, LeGarrette Blunt, Mark Thompson, E.J. Anderson, they try to bring in these big, powerful running backs, and it never seems to work out because they're always past their prime. But Bo Scarborough isn't, so maybe, you know, he gives you a different factor in the backfield because, honestly, between Carrion, DeAndre Swift, and Jason Utley, you don't really have a power back there. I think maybe Carrion is the most of a power back, but, again, he's not really. He can run between the tackles, but, you know, he's not a power back. Bo Scarborough kind of is. So I went with Bo there, but even though Ty Johnson's not a little guy either. So very tough decision. That's five running backs. At the tight end position, I decided to keep TJ Hawkinson and Jesse James. And drum roll, Hunter Bryant or Isaac Nauta? Isaac Nauta. My prediction was Isaac Nauta, man. And I know some people are going to be shocked by that. And some people are like, who the heck is Isaac Nauta? Yes, this is a player that the Lions drafted out of Georgia, who's known to have maybe the best hands in the draft class. However, last season he struggled, but I think when he gets more comfortable, he's gonna do a lot better. We all started, we already saw him working out with Matthew Stafford, so that's a great sign. I think that Isaac Nauta will be that guy the Lions keep around next season. Hunter Bryant is not your normal, normal tight end. And if they can find a way to keep him on the roster, that would be awesome because he just gives you a different factor, but he's not your normal tight end. So I went with Isaac Nauta. Ah, man, that's tough. There we have 11 altogether. So now let's get on to the wide receiver position. And at the wide receiver position, a little bit easier, still not super easy, a little bit easier. We have Kenny Galladay, Marvin Jones Jr., Danny Amendola. I kept Marvin Hall and Quintess Cephas. So five wide receivers, which I believe the Lions did in 2019 as well. However, there's a little like tricky one in here because yes, Geronimo Allison is gone. He may be like, well, why wouldn't you keep Geronimo? Well, here's the problem. Jamal Agnew. Jamal Agnew said he's converting to wide receiver or that's what we're told that he's converting to wide receiver. So if Jamal Agnew is converting the wide receiver, now I got to make a decision. Do I keep Jamal Agnew or not? Because if I do, obviously, you know, it takes another spot away from someone potentially on defense. Now I have to make that decision. I told you guys in the last video, I would make that decision for this video. I decided to keep it, man. I know that it's probably not super realistic to keep a guy that's switching positions in the offseason because maybe that's like, oh, snap. Yeah, he might be losing his role. But at the same time, I think him on offense with Daryl Bevel would be pretty darn awesome. And I think once Daryl Bevel sees him in practice on offense, he'd be like, 
yeah, I can have some fun with this guy. And Eliza would be like, all right, we'll bring him right. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Okay, I'm stopped. Anyways, I'm keeping Jamal Agnew on the team. So yes, six wide receivers technically, even though he may not go out there. I don't know what he's going to, I really don't know. But I have a feeling Daryl Bevel is going to find some interesting ways to keep him involved. So uh, yeah, Jamal Agnew's on the team. And then offensive line, Taylor Decker, Joe Dahl, Frank Ragnow, Jonah Jackson, Big V, Kenny Wiggins, Logan Stenberg, Bo Benshaw, and Terrell Crosby. So no Dan Skipper, no Josh Fogarnett, even though I think both of those guys have a high ceiling. Dan Skipper, get it? He's 6'10". Okay, that was dumb. Well, he needs to have a high ceiling. Okay, I need to stop. The jokes aren't working anymore. Joshua Garnett, <laughs> you know, Joshua Garnett, the former first-round pick, has a high ceiling, but I went with Bo Benshaw. It tells me something. When you keep around an undrafted free agent for an entire year, it tells me you probably like that guy. So I'm going to go with Bo Benshaw. So boom, that's it. Now, we include special teams, which is Matt Prater, Aaron Sipas. Yes, that's our new punter. And Don Muehlbach, the legend himself, Don Muehlbach. So that leaves us with 29 players, including Jamal Agnew. Now we have 26 spots left for the defensive side. And oh my gosh, this was hard to do. And you're going to be shocked by some of these answers. Okay, you will be shocked. Let's start off at the defensive line position. And going through the defensive line, in 2019, the Lions kept seven defensive linemen. But I said, forget all that. This year, we're keeping six. Yep, not a lot of players, but there is still a practice squad. Keep that in mind. So my six defensive linemen include Danny Shelton, the former Patriot, Nick Williams, the former Bear. Deshaun Hand, the former Alabama Crimson Tin. Crimson Tin? Crimson Tin. A Crimson Tin? What is a Crimson Tin? Okay, I didn't know what to say, y'all. You'll see how that went? Because I was going, right? And I was saying the former Chicago Bear, the former Alabama Crimson Tide didn't sound right in my head. So I said Crimson Tin. Like, like, like possessive? Okay, that's not a word. Um, He's shown us flashes before, and I think he has a lot of potential. So I'm keeping Deshaun Hand. John Penasini, the former Utah Ute. See, I can do that one. Ute works well because, you know, I just take the S off. The former Utah Ute. Romeo Okora, the brother of the man that was drafted this season by the Lions. And Trey Flowers, the legend himself. What does that mean? Well, it means we're cutting some really good players. We're cutting Jay Sean Cornell, who I'm moving to the practice squad. I'm not really cutting him. He will kind of, but he's on the practice squad. John Atkins. That one was probably the toughest because Atkins does actually have a role usually with the Lions on defensive line, but I think they're going to make way for some of these younger guys, see what they can do, right? A lot of new guys, see what you can do. Kevin Strong, another tough one, man. I love the Kevin Strong story. Olive Sagapulu, I think that's how you say his name, and Justin Heron. Now moving on to the linebacker position. The first linebacker is Jamie Collins, clearly, right? Um, next up, we have Julio Quora, who will be our jack role this season. Christian Jones, and Jared Davis, who may not be here after this year. This could be his final year on our roster. We declined his fifth-year option, guys. That's crazy. Jelani Tavai, the former Rainbow Warrior. That's 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 good stuff. Austin Bryant, the former Clemson Tiger. See, everyone works except for dang Alabama Crimson Tide. Why? This, come on, man. Jalen Reeves Maven, the special team specialist. I love saying that. I really like Reggie Ragland as well as Elijah Lee. I mean, both these guys we signed this offseason. Granted, they were cheap contracts, but still, Elijah Lee is a special teams player. I watched him. He had a pretty nice role before. I was watching him a lot today and I saw some good, but he never popped off to me. And I was just like, okay, I feel like he looks, he reminded me a lot of Jalen Reeves Maven. And if I'm keeping Maven, why would I keep Lee? Jason Cabana, the former Raider, Christian Sam, just some hard decisions, Anthony Pittman. So that is what your linebacker position is gonna look like. Now, moving on to the cornerback position. In 2019, the Lions kept seven. And this season, they do something similar. The Lions keep Jeffrey Okuda, Justin Coleman, Desmond Trufant, and Omani Oruwarie, which is your four, easy. Yo, Roberts, easy. That's five. Oh, snap. None. Why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? Tony McRae. Tony McRae, who was with Ray Braden Coombs, who is now our special teams coordinator. He's got the leg up. So, boom, they're familiar. He's going to make it. D-Virgin or Michael Ford? Do I keep D-Virgin, right? D-Virgin, the special teams player, 77% of special team snaps, never plays defensively. I think he had one defensive snap all last year. Or Michael Ford, who could play both defense and special teams. 54% of special team snaps. I went with Michael Ford. I feel like Michael Ford is more of a role defensively and he can play a little special teams and I kept Tony McRae so I don't need to keep D-Virgin. Michael Ford, welcome to the team. I mean, you're already on the team, but welcome back to the team. That's all right. Moving on to the safety position, our final five players that we have is easy. Tracy Walker, Daron Harmon, Will Harris, J. Ron Curse, and CJ Moore. So boom! That is it, y'all. That is my final 55-man roster prediction. Let me know some of the things that you would change. What do you think will happen for 2020? Thank you, Brad, for watching, and I'm out.